Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we are going to be going over bass. Bass is a Max for Live instrument that is, I guess, focused on making bass lines. It is monophonic and it is analog y, I guess, and it sounds pretty neat, namely because it has filter drive right here and uh, distortion on the output, which is exceptionally useful and important. Um, so, yeah, let's go over the key areas. So we have the oscillator section here, right? This is, you know, the, the sound generation. Down here is uh, an interesting kind of modulation section. Well, kind of like a half modulation section. It's like a semi-modulation section. Uh, you, can, uh, you can map the amplifier envelope to pitch and have the ring modulation going on and sync that. It's pretty interesting. Over here is the filter section. So you have a drive cutoff resonance filter envelope uh, with your filter types. Very useful. Down here is the dedicated um, envelope for the filter, ADSR, right here. Map to that. Pretty cool. Over here is the, it looks measly, uh, but this is the, uh, the modulation section. So you have the ability to uh, modulate four things with one LFO, but don't get upset because, you know, it, uh, it's good to limit yourself and work within limitations and make some neat sounds. Final stage is the output volume and uh, voicing section. Uh, something that's very noteworthy is the distortion knob here. That's what uh, is the soup of the day, or not the soup of the day, it's the, it's the, you know, the thing that makes the synth cool. And down here is the amplifier envelope, ADSR, right here. So we got dedicated envelopes and, you know, just a little modulation section and uh, lots of freedom in here so let's get rid of that so we have the basic sound here and you have the usual suspects so how it works is you don't actually um, enable any oscillator you actually like you, they're always going on you just adjust the volume of each Right? So, you know, pretty self-explanatory. So we start off, we have a sine, which is a pure tone. Then we have a saw, which is a sawtooth, which is a ramp saw going up. We have the, uh, I guess you call it a pulse. It's also a square. And we can adjust the uh, pulse width down there. And we have a triangle wave, which is like a sign, but it has more harmonics, which you can use to beef up your sound. And then we have the sub, which uh, kind of runs underneath things, which uh, will shake your windows. So you use a combination of these. So you go, we'll go saw and sub, right? So you have beef under there and uh, something... Something interesting about the synth is the analog percentage, which emulates drift. So what happens is, as analog synths are being played or warming up or over time, um, the heat will actually change the resistance of the components inside, like the wires and the leads, resistors, capacitors. It'll actually change the resistance, which in turn changes how it behaves, um, and it'll change the pitch tracking in it. Um, it is, you know, one of those things uh, that you got to deal with. So you're, you know, you're constantly kind of tuning, or you just live with it because it sounds cool and analog and whatever. Who needs to be perfectly in pitch these days? Um, sarcasm. Um, so. What you do is you live with it, or if you're a company like Moog, you put in some clever things under the hood to compensate for this, and it kind of calibrates it uh, at all kind of operating temperatures, and, you know, then you get, you know, 
one of the best-selling analog synths in the world that does this. Uh, so, basically, yeah, the option is there. You hear it kind of drifting in and out of uh, pitch. They'll just use like very um, a low, uh, a very low amount of that. And that adds uh, like an analog. It makes it, it makes it interesting, right? So yeah, there's that. Another option is sub through, which the sub can completely bypass the filter section, which is useful. And uh, sub tone will kind of what does it say here? It, it increases the distortion applied to the sub, so the sub will have more harmonics. I like that for some reason. So yeah, let's uh, continue on. So we have uh, an interesting kind of section here. Uh, we got your ring, which can do some cool things. You can sync that, uh, which is like a tuned ring. And also you have uh, this uh, amplifier envelope that you can adjust and sync that to pitch. and get some really interesting things going on. Again, kind of a creative way of getting some new sounds. Um, the idea is to try new synths and, um, you know, learn and experiment and you get new sounds, which is pretty cool. All right, so onwards to the filter section. So we have a cutoff and resonance, basic. Sorry, ears. We have that, and then we have, uh, let's get to that later. So we have our different types. So uh, there's low pass, and then there's like aggressive low pass. Uh, high pass, band pass, and NT, which is a notch filter. I don't know why it's called NT. And then you have, that's all of your filter types. You have your drive, which um, stems from the idea that they used to do on the old Moogs where the output would be fed back into the input, creating a feedback into the filter, which would in turn give you this, I guess, pleasing smudgy effect. So I'll just turn down the filter envelope for that. Which uh, shapes the sound. that. So um, from there we have the filter envelope which uh, dictates how much of this envelope will affect the filter cutoff. So I'll bring down the sustain, the decay. Right, which sounds pretty neat. Uh, all sorts of fun things can be done with this. We also have the envelope time, which multiplies the uh, milliseconds, the amount of time here. And, uh, you know, you can get uh, more of a snappy envelope or a slower one. Or like you can like switch between those, which will get like more of a performance. It'll give you more of an interesting feel. I want to jump ahead a little bit and uh, go to the distortion because this is where I really want to go right now. Distortion will kind of make the sound a bit more interesting. And you can do all sorts of fun stuff. Right, you can do all sorts of stuff, and it's a combination between the drive and the distortion and the resonance uh, for this particular type of um, sound design. Anyway, so let's move on to the measly modulation section. You have uh, one LFO that can affect uh, pulse width modulation, pitch, filter, and volume. So uh, let's just uh, bring it to zero, and let's just affect the filter a little bit. All 
All right, there's that, and that's adjusting, that's modulating the filter cutoff. I can do the same for volume, giving me like an amplitude modulation sort of thing. I can go right up to the audible range. Which uh, gives it a bit of movement and interesting kind of things. This R means re-trigger, so the LFO is uh, reset every time I hit a key, which uh, gives it a little bit of continuity. Fade in will adjust the amount of time it takes for the LFO to reach peak amplitude. So you can get some cool sounds with that. Right, so you got the continuity there, which is uh, important. So I'll just move on from that. It's a you know one of those one of those things where you limit yourself and you make a new sound, which is fun. Let's uh, move on to tuning. So there's so a bunch of different ways to tune. You can global tune semitone, or in sense, you can kind of move that up and down subtly to emulate the 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 tuning that's a little bit off on a keyboard. You can also go fully up and down um, an octave, a full octave. And that's useful if like you drop in like a MIDI file. So instead of like moving the MIDI file down by you know selecting everything, holding shift and pressing down, you can just go here and just experiment with uh, uh, different octaves uh, that occupy the keyboard. Uh, distortion, we kind of already went over that. It's a great way to add um, and accentuate those harmonics, especially when you have the resonance going on. Volume, you know, self-explanatory is the output of that. Pitch bend range dictates how, you know, what the, the maximum range of the pitch bend is. Portamento is kind of like this drift, which you can have, which, again, is a bit more analog. And then down here is the, um, the ADSR of the amplitude, or the amplifier. So this is like the final kind of stage that when you hit a key, this dictates kind of what's going on. You can increase the release, uh, add an attack, add more of an attack, and things like that. And the multiplier, pretty useful and fun. And you know you can make it more snappy, less snappy. Uh, just gives a bit more flexibility. Um, so back to tuning, I want to mention that you can actually tune each oscillator uh, independently. This is useful if you want to have like, I don't know, like a, like a square wave up here. And you can have that, you know, up uh, an octave. And you can add, you know, more kind of character in there. It's uh, pretty fun to do. You can also tune things slightly. So they're, the, each oscillator is kind of a little bit out of tune, which uh, a little bit of tiny adjustments, differences um, overall, will kind of add up and make your sound sound more interesting as opposed to like one very extreme value that's exaggerated. Um, but they get, there's nothing wrong with having one value exaggerated. But yeah, this generally my uh, my rule of thumb. So I'll have this like up, you know, have this one down, you know, and just kind of do things that way. And we get like a really interesting sound. <laughs> So that's like a deep kind of drony bass that we got going on here. So that is a uh, bass, I guess. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you learned stuff and take care and have a good one.